we may shed tears of joy while watching animation films. But the reason behind our crying may also be because they highlight the things we may need, but currently lack. Animated movies tend to focus on a few critical steps to make a story more easily digestible. We, as the audience, get to see the main characters struggle, we get to witness how they deal with these struggles, and we get a glimpse of how it feels to overcome them. And this structure is so clear-cut. There's a want. I love Kung Fu! Then there's difficulty. You're a disgrace to Kung Fu, and if you have any respect for who we are and what we do, you will be gone by morning. Then positive change, usually in character development or learning to overcome the difficulty. Then there's the actual overcoming or beating the problem, sometimes quite literally. And finally closure. Master. Master. All condensed in usually no more than two hours of runtime. No intruding thoughts, no self-doubt, no feelings of pervasive anxiety, no delusions, no dealings with deeply tortured individuals, no seemingly immovable obstacles, no worry, that spans beyond this allotted time period. When the end credits roll, you know that's that. The story is over. Back in this universe, we sometimes have to face quite a different reality. One that is much more complex and jumbled up, where the boundaries between being good or bad can be muddled, where there are no clear directions to follow and no absolutely right paths. The reality of being a human is very much complex and figuring it out may sometimes take a whole lifetime. So while still clutching that tissue in our hand, even after the movie has ended, a thought may appear. If only it was that simple. The next thing is authenticity, or the realization of a lack thereof. Some animated heroes are aware of what they truly want and who they are from the get-go, while others experience the journey of self-discovery, which inevitably leads to self-realization. Po wants to do Kung Fu, finds his shape and size to be a hindrance, learns that they're actually an advantage and becomes a Kung Fu master. Hiccup wants to be a good Viking and kill a dragon, learns he is incapable of doing the latter, which in addition to his ingenuity helps him save his village and become a true Viking. Mirabelle tryhards to make her family proud, realizes that is a mission impossible. I will never be good enough for you. Discovers who she really is and manages to patch the crumbling relations within the family. Mei Mei also wants to be perfect for her mother, no matter her urge for independence. Learns that being uniquely individual is okay and gets to keep her wild side. The real world, on the other hand, may not be so generous. For example, like Meilin, some of us may also try to do our best to be perfect offspring, but in the process of indiscriminately catering to every one of our parents' wishes, we may continuously neglect our own. In our striving to help the ones we love the most, we may lose the opportunity to explore who we really are at young age, leading to not knowing what makes us happy, what we are passionate about, or even not having friends as full-grown adults. And sadly, some of us end up never being able to discover who we really are. There's also another side of this story. Some, also as a result of imbalanced relationships, learn the best way to get by is to give in to others' needs and to forgo or suppress their true selves, never allowing themselves to experience the world in accordance to their needs. I never wanted to marry him! I was doing it for the family! But others remain undeterred. And contrary to the circumstances they were born and raised in, they take a leap of faith and manage to remain authentic despite the hardships they have to face. This, however, often comes with a trade-off. The possibility we will never be accepted or appreciated by our family or the broader community no matter how much of a positive impact we make. In animated films the norm is the opposite. No matter what, the hero almost unfailingly gets glorified for their authenticity and ends up accepted by the community or their loved ones. Po defeats Tsai Lung and gets recognized as a kung fu master and a savior. The whole village of Brick ends up accepting dragons because of Hiccup's actions. Mirabelle gets accepted for who she is by the town, her family, and maybe most importantly, her grandmother. Meilin's mom learns to embrace the growing individuality of her daughter, because deep down, beyond the need to control the actions of others, she is a person who wishes all the best for Mei Mei and wants to see her happy. She comes to terms with her daughter's personality and wishes, because she cares and loves Mei Mei very much. The farther you go, the prouder I'll be. And this is one area animated movies excel in. Portraying powerful feelings so clearly, we feel almost indebted to emotionally react to them. We smile when a happy moment arises. We cry when a sad one comes. 
The perceived clarity of joy, sorrow, jealousy, envy or fear may remind us of how our lives are different in that regard. Emotions are complex and can be difficult to identify. Also, at times we may experience so much stuff that the only thing we are certain we feel is confusion. At other times, emotions can be so subtle we don't even notice them, let alone begin to resolve the issues they stem from. And a satisfactory resolution to an emotionally taxing situation can sometimes only be found on the screen we are staring at. Animated films always offer a vision of positive change, stemming from characters least likely to be affected by it. Stoic. I'm proud to call you my son. Tigress. Master. Master. Master Shifu. Abuela. I lost sight of who our miracle was for. And I am so sorry. Ming. Their ability to see through their damaging actions and to acknowledge their mistakes offer us hope that we can almost touch. Every animated movie ends on a high note and hands us happiness as a cherry on top. But life doesn't need to play by these rules. Difficult people who cause us the most pain may never reach a level of self-awareness that allows them to see that they are part of the problem. And arguing with them about it may only make matters worse. Sometimes we may have no options left but to accept life as imperfect where issues remain unresolved for months, years or longer, we may have to consider the possibility of delaying the happy ending indefinitely. So the question becomes, should we stop watching these movies as they only offer us false hope? The answer, I think, is a resounding no. First, these films offer us a chance to experience the purity of emotions, be it sadness or joy. Second, they allow us the time for introspection. Digging into our souls and identifying the why behind our feelings can be eye-opening. Discovering that we crave for simplicity, authenticity, acceptance for being who we are, emotional clarity, and that we hope for a happy resolution of our problems gives us insight into the areas of our lives we may benefit from working on. Sure, we may be unable to change people or make them accept us, but we can nudge ourselves on a path of positive development. For example, exploring minimalism may offer a glimpse of a simpler life. Gathering the courage to accept ourselves for who we really are may lessen the impact of what others think of us. Hiring a trained professional to help us work on our emotional balance may make us more in touch with what we feel. And a happy ending may not necessarily resemble an obvious win or an overwhelmingly positive change in other people. It may simply manifest as coming to terms with a less satisfying yet extremely bearable compromise. The trick is to work on ourselves rather than giving too much energy to people who may not deserve it. But if we have no choice but to work with them, we may as well explore what Marcus Aurelius has to say about it.